Hi, and welcome to the Matrix Algebra Tutor. And in this class, we're going to focus on a part of algebra that is sort of, it's sort of compartmentalized. A lot of times you'll learn about this stuff in uh, college algebra. You'll learn about it sometimes at the very end of an Algebra 2 class, depending on your class. And of course, uh, when you're off doing engineering and other things, you'll, you'll have a dedicated class in this called Linear Algebra. At least some of the topics uh, in your Linear Algebra class will be covered by, by everything on this DVD and, and additionally more things as well. Okay? So the point is, matrix algebra, which we're going to learn about over the next uh, several hours, is very integral and it's, it's a part of algebra that's very, very useful and it's a part of algebra that can throw people for a loop um, mainly because it looks completely different than anything you've ever learned in algebra once you start uh, dealing with it. I mean, in algebra, I mean, it does have the word algebra in the title, so you expect to see a lot of x's and y's and exponents and things like this, but matrix algebra or matrices, they usually don't have any variables at all, and I, I think you might have a fair idea of what a matrix is just by thumbing through your textbook. You, you see these square brackets and, and you, know, you know that there's some sort of math going on here, but it looks completely different than anything else you probably learned up until that point. And so it, do, it looks sort of like gibberish and it looks like it's going to be difficult. But the fact of the matter is once you take it one step at a time from the beginning and march through what these things are about and work, worry about how, to, how to, to use them and how to manipulate them just like you had to learn how to manipulate your variables and your exponentials and everything else, we're going to learn about how to manipulate these matrix, uh, matrix things, okay? And it's not going to be a big deal. That's the point. So. This section of the class is the first section and what we're going to learn about mainly is what, what is a matrix, okay? Let's write it down, let's talk about its components, let's get comfortable looking at them. We're not going to be adding anything or subtracting anything, we're just going to learn about what a matrix is and why they're useful, okay? So let me start with the first thing, the motivation. Why do we care about matrix algebra? Why do we uh, make it a point to learn matrix algebra, okay? Well, let me ask you this, when you remember back uh, to your algebra, from a long time ago, at some point you did study something called uh, uh, solving a system of equations. That's what you, you studied. It's covered in my DVDs, it's covered in every algebra class that you're going to take, whether it's college algebra or algebra 2 in high school or whatever, you will study something called uh, solving a system of equations. That's a big fancy thing and all it means is, if you remember back, you have uh, instead of just one equation to solve, you know, like x you know, plus 2 is equal to 9, that would be one equation. A system of equations is usually more than one equation and more than one variable. So for instance, you might have, instead of one equation, you might have two separate equations, and because you have two equations, you're trying to solve for two unknowns, okay, x and y, let's say. Or if you want to have a more complicated problem, you could have three variables you're trying to solve, x, y, and z, and because you have three variables, you, you must have three equations in order to, to solve for all the variables. So the short and long and short of it is, you have to have as many equations uh, to describe the system you're talking about as variables you're trying to solve. So as a practical example, let's say in this room, uh, you know, this gas, this air around my head right now, okay, it has a certain temperature, okay, it has a certain pressure, you know, the pressure goes up and down with the weather, depending on the cold fronts and warm fronts that come through and it might have a certain humidity, let's say. So those are three variables. We could call them x, y, and z. But in, you know, if you're solving a real problem, you might actually have a problem that deals with the pressure of some gas, the temperature of some gas, and let's just say the humidity of the gas. So three variables. And you might have three equations in order to solve those three variables. So what you would do, you would write down the equations um, that describe you know, the system and you'd have to have three different equations to solve for those three variables if that's what you were trying to do. And you were taught several different ways to do that. You were taught, if you remember back from algebra, you were taught how to solve that by substitution. You can take one of those equations, you can solve it for a variable, plug it back in another equation, and by doing a lot of substitution over and over again, you can eventually solve for one of these variables and continue solving for the remaining variables, so you can use substitution. You also probably learn something called uh, addition, uh, solving them by addition, or sometimes it's called solving them by subtraction. Basically, that is just taking the equations and lining them up one under another, and you can, you can uh, long and short of it is you can subtract them from one another, and uh, by doing that, you end up eliminating some variables and solving for some variables, okay? So what am I leading to? Why, why am I taking you down this memory lane of algebra that you've studied you know, before? Because solving a system of equations, which is just simply more than one equation 
and of course more than one variable because you have more than one equation, okay? You already know a few techniques to solve those things. You've already done that before. The main use of matrices, okay, the main use of matrices or matrix algebra is doing that, solving a system of equations in a shorthand, fast way. That's really what it is, okay? So if you have to take one thing away from this section, at least in the beginning here, the entire point of this entire DVD course is not just to bore you with a bunch of matri matrices on the board, it's because it has a point. And the point is you can use this matrix stuff to solve systems of equations that are very useful to, to learn how to solve in real life problems, okay? And you can do it without all that substitution, without all of that equation addition. You're going to use it, uh, solve it using matrices. And you're going to find out that once you figure out how to crank through it, it's going to be actually not too bad. And it's going to save you time because it's going to save you from writing down a lot of other uh, steps. If you remember back, solving those systems it took a, a fair amount of paper to do because you're writing all the equations down every time and solving them. With a matrix, once we show you how, it's not going to be a big deal. Okay? So that's where we're going. That, that is the end game. The first few sections of this course are going to teach you what a matrix is, how to add them, subtract them, and everything else, sort of leading up, giving you the skills. So once we get to the middle of the class here, the, the DVD, you'll learn how to actually solve systems of equations and understand what these things are for. Now matrices have uses far beyond that, but that is certainly the most important thing for you to remember now and certainly probably the most practical reason that we use them. And computers uh, use matrices to solve these, these things all the time. If you're going you know, to write a computer program to solve a real problem for um, more than one equation, you're definitely going to use a matrix to solve it. No question about that. Okay? So let's finally dive into the topic here and figure out what a matrix is. Okay? The, uh, the big deal here is a matrix is nothing more than uh, some rows and columns of numbers. Okay? For a minute, even though I've kind of given you the, the end game of where we're going, that we're going to use these matrices to represent system of equations, just forget about that for now. Just put it in the back of your head and remember that's what we're going to use these things for. But for now, just open your mind and, and, and learn about what a matrix is. And it's simply a square bracket with some numbers inside. Okay? It's not that big of a deal. So let's write that down. Okay, a matrix contains rows and columns of numbers. Now, notice I didn't say that it contains variables. I didn't say that it contains exponents. I said it's rows and columns of numbers. So when you think about that, even though they might look a little funny at first, and we'll get to that here in a second, it's really just some brackets filled with numbers. And you've been dealing with numbers ever since you were a kid. So, you know, even though it looks foreign to you at first, it's not that bad. There's not a bunch of variables running around here for you to keep track of with a matrix. Usually, you're going to be dealing with numbers. And numbers are much easier to wrap your brain around, usually, than a foreign concept with variables. Okay? So, what, what is a matrix? The easiest way to do it is just to write one down. Okay?